after almost three years, excuse me, almost three years after a massive earthquake and tsunami ushered in the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. We're just now learning the truth of what went down in the wake of the Fukushima Daiichi meltdown. New reports suggest that the U.S. Navy knew all along that sailors on the USS Reagan, a ship supposedly used to transport humanitarian supplies in the wake of the March 11, 2011 earthquake and tsunami, were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. If true, these reports could have a big impact on the $1 billion lawsuit filed by the Reagan's sailors against Tokyo Electric Power, TEPCO, the company in charge of the Fukushima plant. Many of those sailors are suffering from health problems commonly associated with radiation exposure, even though the Navy denies they had contact with radiation levels dangerous enough to cause these kinds of health problems. And while the sailors on the USS Reagan have had to worry about radiation-related health problems for almost three years, everyone on the Pacific coast of the United States might soon be facing exposure as well. Scientists have already detected Fukushima radiation off the coast of Vancouver, and others think that more could be coming as soon as April. Joining me now for more on all of this is Paul Gunter, director of the Re Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. Also with me tonight is progressive commentator Nate Sweet. And Paul, welcome back. Nate, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, uh, Paul, there's uh, new reports about the Navy's knowledge. What, what, what do these reports say, in essence? Well, <clears throat> um, you know, the concern all along is uh, why was the USS Ronald Reagan just a couple of miles away from the Fukushima coast? And it's been our concern that they were there to lay a power line from the ship's nuclear reactor to the Fukushima Daiichi reactors, which had, were in station blackout, and they were trying to repower up the cooling system. So they had to get the, the, the uh, this aircraft carrier in really close. And as a result, um, there was uh, there were the explosions, uh, which lofted radioactivity into the atmosphere. But there was also the the um, radioactivity flowing into the ocean water that was being sucked into the Ronald Reagan's desalinization plant. And so the ship was, was taking in radioactive water um, and then it was going into the drinking water, bathing, cooking, uh, ship service systems, and uh, a lot of crew members got exposed. We're only seeing uh, initially um, you know, under 100 right now, but we expect this uh, exposure rate to go up. This, this is a nuclear-powered carrier, though. I mean, they, they have, my understanding, I mean, from, from watching the Tom Clancy movies, you know, is that when you've got a nuclear reactor on board, like on a submarine or an aircraft carrier, you've got all kinds of radiation detectors all over the thing, that if radiation is detected, sirens go off, and people jump up and down with their hair on fire, and, you know, how come none of that happened? Well, or did it? I, clearly, these sailors were put into harm's way, and um, their mission um, was, you know, clearly vital, but um, to hold back information, I think one of the big concerns that we've got is that now, now the U.S. Navy is saying that these sailors didn't get any more radiation than you would get on an airplane flight or, you know, it, being exposed to rocks. But clearly the, the you know, what the, the, it's so disingenuous to try to make that distinction between um, internal exposure when these sailors were inhaling radiation mm. uh, as opposed to external exposure. You don't inhale rocks. Right. You don't eat dirt. You know, th th um, these exposures have much more significant consequence when you take it into um, the soft tissue like muscle or bone marrow or thyroid. Uh, these, are, um, these are much more significant exposures than what the Navy's letting on right now. I guess the big question here is if the USS Ra Ronald Reagan was on a mission to try to hold off some sort of dis disaster at the Fukushima power plant, why didn't the Navy come clean with that earlier on? Is there some ulterior motive there, or did they just want to, you know, quell any fears of a nuclear disaster? Right. You know, originally the stories were that the Reagan didn't come within 100 miles of the coastline, and that they were flying aircraft, helicopters in this humanitarian mission. But, you know, the uh, um, right now, um, Congress is asking a lot more questions. The omnibus uh, budget uh, bill for 2014 
uh, basically wants an inventory now of um, from the Secretary of Navy uh, for you know what these sailors and Marines were exposed to, and uh, you know what are the ailments that they're suffering from, and uh, what was the mission, and so um, these are these are now you know, going to be. Um, uh, significant, significant questions. We're looking to get answers, hopefully, as early as April uh, 2014. Yeah. And, and could, you know, the Navy has been blocked from being sued by the sailors that are, that are currently suing TEPCO right now. Could these new revelations potentially change that, or will things stay as they are and only TEPCO um, be sued by the, by the sailors? Right now, the, the suit is focused on um, the fact that Tokyo Electric Power Company uh, misled, withheld, lied, um, falsified uh, information, um, and uh, I think that uh, the, the focus is going to be on, on Japan and uh, the Tokyo Electric Power Company right now. I mean, obviously there's a tug of war going on as well between, you know, the status of uh, our U.S. naval military ports in Japan and how this whole thing washes out. I, I was wondering, what, what is the point of intersection where, you know, the Navy uses nuclear power, so maybe they don't want to, but uh, the bases, now that's when the penny dropped for me. That makes perfect sense. Um, I mentioned in my introduction, we're starting, we're hearing reports that Fukushima based radiation is starting to show up on the, on the west coast of North America. Is, is that the case? Um, I know a lot of these radioisotopes have probably by this time already decayed, the, the iodine, for example, is probably decayed to the point where it's not of great consequence. What about things like cesium and strontium that are hyper bioavailable? The body thinks that they're potassium and calcium, respectively. Um, uh, what's showing up? And, and, oh, and also, you know, the, the, the really heavy nucleides, you know, the, the actinides, the, the, the transuranic elements, um, those are super heavy. Wouldn't have, they have settled to the bottom of the ocean long before they got to the West Coast? Well, I think that what we're seeing right now is the leading edge of the plume that um, has had several transport mechanisms. Uh, you know, initially, 80% uh, of the radioactivity that was released from the Fukushima uh, accident was at, to the atmosphere and it blew out into the ocean. It rained out into the ocean. And then uh, along about March 15, 2011, there was a huge uh, radioactive uh, liquid discharge into the ocean. Um, and then there's the, 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 the debris field that has radioactivity in it. And um, now we've seen an ongoing discharge of radioactive cesium, a whole soup of radioactive L isotopes that are feeding into this plume from ongoing discharges. You know, most recently um, we're seeing um, uh, reports of discharges seven million times the uh, cesium levels that are supposedly permitted, but um, they're, um, they're showing up right now in, in this initial leading edge and we're going to be seeing uh, these counts get higher, we suspect, but um, uh, it's, uh, it, the concern is, is that there's not effective monitoring right, right. now. The government shut down basically all the monitors. Now we've yeah. just got these volunteer networks that are, that are coming to being named. And, and should anybody be concerned of any health consequences of the radiation coming up to the Pacific Coast? Should people who eat food from that area be concerned of eating that food? Well, according to the University of Alaska, their uh, uh, fisheries and uh, ocean science division, um, there's no definitive answer right now. You know, these are still very early stages. Um, the concern is, though, that we, we are seeing um, radioactive contamination along the marine yeah, this uh, food is, this chain. Is Paul, pardon my interruption, we have just a minute. I wanted to get into the waste isolation pilot project. You guys are monitoring that in the minute we have left. Right. Uh, we have uh, the waste isolation 
pilot project outside of Carlsbad, uh, New Mexico. Um, <clears throat> it's a uh, Department of Energy facility for storing uh, nuclear waste, principally plutonium, from the nuclear weapons facility. It was licensed for 10,000 years. Uh, but on February 5th, uh, February 5th, there was a fire down there. And now we have just 15 years into the operation of this facility, we have uh, radioactive plutonium and americium uh, surfacing now being evidenced in uh, radioactive monitors a half a mile from the site. And just recently, the announcement that 13 uh, DOE contractors uh, who were working on the surface at the time have now been internally contaminated oh, by radioactivity. And plutonium is the most deadly substance known to man. And th that's amazing. Um, Paul Gunter, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Tom. And, and, thank you. And, and Nate will be back with us in our next block. Stick around.